We can rise to the occasion. We can build this nation moving forward. All that we need, visionary leadership, people who love their people, people who love the citizens, people who love the country, and then we can rise. We can fly again. Hope Restoration Ministries, restoring hope to our world. Welcome to our broadcast. Enjoy. We are more than two, we are more than three this morning. There you have commanded your blessing, there you have commanded deliverance. It is at the meeting of your place that you have commanded provision and healing. It is at this time again that we gather, O oh God, because we need healing deliverance. We seek provision from you, peace with you. Father, we bless your holy name. Our hearts long for you this morning. Our hearts hunger for you, O oh God. We declare that you are the God of our salvation. You are our beginning and our end. You are the day spring of our lives and bishop of our souls. So our heart thirsts for you. Like as the deer thirsts for the food. Oh, my soul and our soul says for you this morning. Speak to us, O oh God. We bless you, Holy Spirit, Spirit of God, Spirit of truth. You are welcome in this place. Invade our spaces. Invade our minds and our emotions. Father, we bless you and we magnify your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. And let all the church say, Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let me just take this opportunity to thank uh, my pastor, Pastor Chris Matebula, uh, the beautiful Mrs. Matebula. Thank you so much for the opportunity just to allow me to share the word of God in this um, flock that God has entrusted you with. And uh, let me thank the team as well, Buknukulunga, and everybody else that I do not know who make it possible, you know, for us to communicate through them. And uh, I thank you and everybody else really who made even the last conference to be such a success. Let's give God a praise. <laughs> it is good to be here. I think we are wrapping up uh, our conference, um, Victoria's Women's Conference, with a beautiful theme, yeah, Beauty for Ashes. Um, I think I've just been emotional this morning, thinking about what God has done. And looking at my own ashes and knowing that had it not been for the Lord who was on my side. Amen. So how would you my law official handle when you were nothing? When everybody had written it off. That just that thought, Hore, how how no seek where would I be? Hell was very close. Death was near. So didn't you say Lodita Ulisa? How buaka beautiful ashes. Let me just shoot straight to the word this morning. A couple of things that I want us to talk about. Uh, one of the things that, the theme of the conference was beautiful ashes. It is still like that. But um, to make this statement that God is always quick and eager to tell us what he is and what he is not. He's always telling us what he has given us and what he has not given us, taking a disclaimer so that when you see something that does not look like him, that he has not alluded that he is able to give and he wants to give, he distances himself from it. So I spoke about on Friday the knowledge, but now if you don't have the knowledge of your father, point number one, if you don't know his will 
Point number two, if you don't know his character, you can coming from a broken family where the mother can say because of their own issues with the father, and then the child grows up knowing what a papa is. And the day I come and I you know, my father is actually not a dog. Because you know, there's a time when, when you say a dog, you think it's a dog. So you have to define when you say ndatao kincha, what did you mean? Because wana utseba bovi elenja. And when we say ndatao hai kincha. So you need to dig deeper in the character of what a dog represents, what a dog does for, for you to have said your father is a dog, right? Now, God always dis di di takes disclaimers and say, I have not given you this, but I have given you this. He says, I've not given you the spirit of fear. But I've given you this spirit so that when you see or you are operating or you feel the spirit of fear operating in your life, you have to ask yourself, whose spirit is this? Because God said, I have not given you this. But he doesn't leave you there because he's not an abstract God. He tells you, I have given you the spirit of power. Oh, am I experiencing power in my life? Then you know it is the spirit of God. Ah, he says, I've given you the spirit of love. Are you experiencing love? I'm not talking about lust now. The love of God, yes. Oh, this is God operating in me. Oh, I have given you the spirit of a sound mind. If you have a sound mind, then you know this is God. I'm trying to say to you, God always takes a disclaimer. He puts it out there to say, I have given you this. He says, I have come that I should give you life. So when you see somebody stealing from you, killing you, destroying you, that is not me. But you have to know. If you do not know, I am not an author of confusion. I don't authorize it. I don't think about it because nothing a little clarity of thought. Raoul Tuana Kerbom, live on that. Good. On Friday, I, 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 I spoke about this verse and I want to start with it again to say Romans 14, verse 15. The things that were afore written were written for our learning that we may receive patience and comfort through scriptures and hope in. Romans 15 verse 4, the things that were afore written. Now, anything that is written requires you as an individual to go, you have to go through the pages. You know, I hear this horrible thing that if you, hide, you want to hide anything from a black person, you must put it in pages. That has to come to an end, girlfriends. We need to read. Route 1. Romans 15 verse 4. The things that were afore written were written for our learning. Other uh, versions say our instructions. You should be able to receive instruction, which means a Bible is an instructive book. So the stories are there to give you an instructions. You have to receive learning. You have to receive uh, teachings from it. Not only that, patience. Not only that, you have to receive comfort that God had been confronted with people who have gone through what you are going through, who have been widows, who have been uh, 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 stolen from, who have been robbed, who have been betrayed. And those are the ashes that we meet here on earth. But he has always given those people something instead of what they had. So God is always in the business, business, business tran transaction giving you, exchanging, giving you something that is bad for you because he can handle it. He's God. That's why he's God. He can handle bad stuff. The Bible says in the book of Romans, whilst we are still enemies of God, he loved us. So he didn't wait for us to be clean. I uh, know, whilst we are still enemies, he loved us. So whilst we were in that enmity state, ha. Huh, he exchanged that with what? With love. Good. 
Now, this morning, I want to shortly speak to you about, uh, I have entitled this message, The Wound of Life. The Wound of Life. Hmm. Let me tell you this about our Lord Jesus Christ from the scripture, 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 9 and 10. For God has not appointed us to incur his wrath. It is not God's design that we must incur his wrath. They were not created for us. I spoke about who lied to you. There are just things that are your inheritance that you have to know about God. Anything can something about ndatism. I don't care who Monica I kita obele like it eh. I think we won't answer nali and nandatism waka kya mutsiba. Lia now ta oblella. Rauka can so the Bible says for God has not up to appoint something is to you, you know you appoint, you prepare. Hooray. This is appointed. I was appointed or I'm going to sit there. That chair was prepared for me. So how no do sit and you were going to be taken off it, right? So God has not appointed us to incur his wrath. He did not select us to condemn us, but that we might obtain his salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the one who died and rose again was the reason for our creation not for wrath Trautuan. so how do you experience the wrath of god what do you think it is the wrath of god the heat the, the things not going your way you have to find out who is Ek. but now the thing is that we have been given uh, 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 the angels of the Lord to assist us. Uh, Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14. Are these are the ministering spirits of God who are ministering to those who are going to what? To inherit salvation. Are you going to inherit salvation? The angels of God are at your service to help you. Make use of them. Tell them, angels of the Lord, you hearken to the voice of the Lord. This is where I'm going. I'm going to that interview. Hey, by the grace of God, I pray that you go and influence the, the, the environment because I'm going there. These are the instruments that have been given to us. You never take time to fast or to do anything or even to command the angels of the Lord. The Bible says in Psalm 91 verse 11, he has given his angels, protective angels, to preserve us, to lead us, and to protect us. You never say anything to your angels. You never speak to them. We are fair, like but they went to the CEO's office long before you ballo potesa di class. Well, now you just show up naked. That's why in the book of Ephesians, the Bible says, put on the whole armor of God. Why are you not putting on? Put on the whole armor of God. I have said the word of God is not an abstract word. It's practical. Everything is practical. It's for our own understanding. I believe the, the, the voice of God is like thunder. Who understands thunder? Hmm? So he has to tone it down, 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 down for us to understand because his voice is like thunder. If thunder says, do, 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 but there's a voice there, there's a message there that is coming to us. So he has to decode it, decode it, decode, all the way up to us for us to understand what he's actually saying. Do you see how big your God is? Hey. Think about this, Murut. Bible, I don't know. I don't know. What is the image that comes into your head? How 
Rena Jesu Christ, the one in Nazareth. What is the image that comes? But now, when you read the book of Revelations, I saw the man who looked like the son of man. I the head, this side, was like a man. About this side, it was like a calf. About this, like, this side, it was a lion. About this side, it was like uh, an eagle. About the mashua thing were like flames of fire. Okay, close your eyes. What kind of a man is that? <laughs> so, once I let's see the Jesu, the Juanana, the little food, the little food, the little food. That's why every time, no, 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 really, when you read that Bible, and if we get, I don't want to scare you. If I could say media people must get an, an image that I have just, I, I'm telling you, hey, when you read this word, go deep. I want one, one day you can check with, I've got that well at this thing, you must warn me first. Because I don't know whether I will collapse or what. And that's why every time you have to read the word. Every time when the angel of the Lord was visiting someone, be it David, be it, uh, he will always say, don't fear. Why? Because they are fearful. <laughs> that's why he is so big. He can deal with these issues. Sarun. All right. The next thing that I want us to read is this. Hmm. Acts chapter 7, verse 22 to 29. You have to listen to this one, and I pray that you will connect with it, and you will find one or two answers there for ourselves. Whatever that you don't need today, put it in the micro, uh, in, the, in the deep freezer one day when you need it. You can defrost it and use it. It is not everything that is being taught that you need now. The young people, maybe the old people, intermediary, whatever, wherever you are. Acts chapter 7, verse 22 to 29. And Moses was learned in all wisdoms of Egypt, Egyptians, and he was mighty in words and deed. This is how we meet Moses. He had learned all the wisdoms of Egyptians. What do you think he learned? Go Egypt to Gwas. Buloi Bate. No, 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 he did. That's why Pharaoh uh, was not uh, intimidated by him. When he did all those snake things, like Moses, I mean, we, uh, we taught you this thing. Oh, so, so, so now, so, Tafela, Ukret, and his snake, Ifela, Mo. The only difference is that his snake ate their snake. But they taught him that. What wisdom was he learning? Nenswa Muruta idol worshipping. He was not worshipping God at the time. Rautwa? Hey, am I not telling the truth now? The Bible says he had learned in all wisdoms. That wisdom did not include God, Jehovah, the one of Abraham, Isaac. No, it didn't. It was the wisdom of Egypt, read it there. And Moses was learned in all wisdoms of Egyptians and was mighty in words and in deed. This boy was good. Huh? Now he was 40 years old. It came to his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. Isn't it amazing that there comes a time in your life where God's uh, 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 call will come? It, he was 40 when he connected with that that he was, that he's supposed to be. Now he's, he's 40. They have taught him all these things, but now there come a time in his heart that uh, the call of God now is, 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 is nudging him. And then what did he see? 25, 25. For he was supposed that uh, his brethren would understood that God would deliver them by his hand. 
but they did not understand. And the next day, he appeared to two of them as they were fighting and tried to reconcile them, saying, Men, you are brethren. Why do you do wrong to one another? But he said to, he, to, he, to, to his neighbor and pushed him away, saying, Who made you ruler and judge over us? Do you want to kill me as you did with Egyptian yesterday? Then at that same Moses fled and he became a dweller in the land of Midian where he had two sons. I want to talk to you about this. <laughs> where you go to your own and you think they will understand. He went there supposing that they would understand that he is the one who's going to de de deliver them. He killed the Egyptians as if uh, the Egyptian guy as if he was buying favor to say, you understand who I am. We are together in this thing. You and I, Livening, I grew up in that house. You know that uh, I'm one of you. You know that I'm your brother. I am your deliverer. But who made you ruler over us? Who appointed you judge? You want to kill me? And the first thing, girlfriend, what happens when this happens? When you are rejected by your own, what is the first thing? You run. Because he's, the scripture says, he supposed they would understand. If you have been misunderstood, the scriptures are there for our learning. Don't run. Run to God. If ever there's any running to do, you're not going to run to media. Run to God. Many times we run to the wrong places and then we ended up in 40, 40 years somewhere in Ethiopia uh, taking care of sheep. It is still the will of God because wherever we are, all things will work together for our good. Because you are appointed, not to the wrath of God, but to eternal life. So do you see now, God has to deal with him right there and make it work. That's why the scripture, all things work together for good, becomes a life. He did wrong. He killed, trying to say, I am your deliverer. I am the one who's going to help you. I am the one who has been sent to help. But that did not work for him. How many times do we want to help our families? How many times do we want to help our friends? And that turns out to be an ash that you have to shake from yourself and, 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 and flee away because they do not understand. He thought they would understand. We have been misunderstood, and from that, there has been pain. We are talking about beauty for ashes, and I want to address uh, to you the, 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 the pain of the wound of life. When you have been wounded by your own, when you have been wounded by those that you thought uh, they would not wound you, and it happens. The Bible has spoken about Moses, where we have just read, being good in speech and in deed. But remember, when God was calling Moses, do you see what a wound would do? In the book of, um, I, don't, I don't have it here, but I remember it is Exodus chapter 4, verse 11. In that book of Exodus chapter 4, verse 11, you remember how God was speaking to Moses when they met behind the bush. <clears throat> when God sent an angel and the angel was speaking on behalf of God saying, Moses, Moses, blah, 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 blah. Come, you have to go and deliver my people. What is the first thing that Moses said? He said, I cannot speak. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not good. I'm not, I'm not good at that. That is the first thing that he said. But we have read that the Bible says he was good. 
He was good in speech. Do you see how the enemy will give you an ash of doubt, self-doubt, and yet you had that? He make you run. He sends you away from your family, away from your destiny, and now you don't even know whether you can talk. Uh, I mean, let's read that scripture, uh, 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 Exodus chapter 7, and see the argument of Moses. We have said in Acts chapter 2, verse 22, Moses was learned in all wisdoms of Egyptians. He could do those snake things, those frog things, he could do it. He could do that. Because remember that every time Moses did it, the Egyptians did it. It was only on the seventh uh, plague that they said, hey, I, this God is bigger, is bigger than yours, you, and then they gave up. But before that, they had the stamina. Imagine if God was only able to do up to six miracles, those uh, plagues. Then Egyptians would have won. I like our God, I love him because when human beings, human ability ends up at the sixth level, he goes to the seventh, the eighth, and the tenth. Then we know that he is God. God by himself, he is a self-existent God. He doesn't ask anybody's permission. Oh no, God allow you to go, 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 go. And see, let's see girlfriend how far you can take it up until you can rely on him and him alone. I wanted us to read this Exodus uh, 7. Did I say Exodus 7? Huh? Verse what? 4. 4 verse 11. Maruti, what did I say? Yeah. And Moses said, 4, 10. And Moses said to the Lord, we are talking about Moses. Oh, my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither before, neither before, since you have spoken to your servant. But I am slow in speech and slow in tongue. So the Lord said to him, who has made the mouth? Ah, who has made the mute and the deaf? Ah, seeing and the blind have I not the Lord uh, uh, done it? And the Lord says, verse 12, now therefore go, I will be with your mouth and teach teach you what you shall say. Go, I will be with your mouth. Girlfriend, bontate, bana, all my daughters and my children, when you go there, go there in the strength of the Lord. You see, the wound of life will make you to doubt yourself. It will make you to run away from your family, to run away from the people that love you, to run away from the people that can share, that can add value to your life. All of us, all of a sudden, you doubt that you can speak. Moses has been speaking. He was taught in all wisdoms in Egypt. But for the first time, he tells God who has created a mouth and ears and everything else that I cannot do it. How many arguments, contemplations have you had with God when God says, go and do it? said, no. You exclude yourself from it. Because you are wounded. The, the wound of disappointment. The Bible says, cursed is the man who trusts in another man. Always leave yourself a little, a little something. You're, you are dealing with a human being. Even the angels could not be trusted. Remember that God sent them to come and do work. What did they do? The Bible says, ah, they saw the daughters of men. Banadi did carefully beautiful. And what happened? Even angels. They were sent. That angel Murut that was sent to go to speak to Zachariah about the coming of John exceeded his mandate. He just got angry by this man arguing about Jesus, uh, John coming and said, yo, shut up. Mwah. You are not going to speak from now on. The wound of life. You have been disappointed by many. 
That guy who said he's going to get married to you, uh, you, you choose the venue, uh, the wedding dress is there, everything is on track, and then he decides to disappoint you. Are you going to drink those antidepressant tablets? Having fun. Aja vanilla ice cream. And sobe and what, 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 what? Banana split. We're now just antidepressant. No. The wound of life. Obo tsama yolo du lako Dubai. Us arranger anything. Us na visa about deport. The wound of life. Let me read this scripture to us in closing. It's a beautiful scripture. I said these things were written unto us as uh, our learning. And uh, we need to learn from the Lord. And I want to, 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 to say uh, we are not greater than our master. Once you understand that, you okay, pay straight to you will collect yourself. You will lose that sense of self-importance that is not supposed to happen to you. If it happened to Jesus' girlfriend, it's coming your way. If it is not happening now, it is about to happen. But when it does, it doesn't mean that God is punishing you. It means that he's pruning you. Right now, we love olive oil, but you don't see it from the fruit. You have to crush the olive so that you receive the oil. We want that oil. The reason why I speak about knowing the Lord, knowing his word, because situations that comes like betrayals, like disappointments, like uh, 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 confusion, they just squeeze what is already inside. Make sure that what is inside is healthy. So that when the ashes come, ay, defeat a fella because... The, 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 the contents, not the container, the contents is healthy. Your olive oil has a fish oil. Rautran, high cloggy, our artery system. Uh -uh. No, 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 no. I want to go to Isaiah, 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 um, Isaiah 55, 53, Isaiah 53. When I'm my kids, when I took it to Rome, say, "Them puzzle me." Isaiah 53, verse five. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful uh, scripture. Hmm. Hey, I don't even know where to start it because I love it. But 51 says, 53, verse one says, "Who has believed our report?" Hmm. And uh, to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Who has, re who, has, who, has, who has believed this report that Jesus died for us? Who has believed the report that we have been empowered? Who believes this report that by his stripes we have been healed? Who believes this report that he has given us a garment of praise? For our mourning. The question of belief. Who has believed that report? The arm of the Lord has to be revealed. You must believe this report. Now, look at these people when they saw Jesus. For he, for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. You know, there are times when we are growing up, uh, it doesn't look like things are, they are a bit shaky. Uh, there, there is no promise or anything. As a root out of the dry ground, there is no support for you. Just growing up on the dry, uh, dry ground. He has no form of comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty and we should not desire him. There is a time when you look at a situation, there is nothing to desire. When you look at this marriage, when you look at this job, when you look at this child, there is nothing to desire. You know, other people have got plans. Oh, they have tallied them on the walls. They are there from here. I'm going there. Where now there is no plan, there is nothing to desire. You cannot be proud about anything. The Bible says, and the great peace, the great, the great and shall be the peace of your, no, I'm not there, I'm not there. 
It has gone all the way to where I don't know. Why do you do that for me? Verse 3. You like a verse 3. You 54. You will you not understand. All right. Let's quickly go there. Time is going. 53.3. He is despised and rejected by men. It is not the angels that despise us. It is the men. Jesus was despised and rejected by men. Oh, but I like what the Bible says. He's a man of sorrow, acquainted with grief. You see, the, the thing that made us to be wounded is because we are not acquainted with grief. Be, be balanced. Mamoritu was talking about that uh, yesterday. Hore, get used to having that balance. Yeah, Munati libushoku. They are part of life. He, he, he is a man of sorrow, but he's also acquainted. He's a fami uh, 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 familiar with grief. This guy has grief. He's a family of trouble. So he did. How so mad he went out because of mad. Who na 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 ngeke? Hey, you should. Once you start speaking like that, what does South Africa know? One one time, J, I I said, stop drawing the lines. For if God does not do this by this time, what can you like to see? He was a man of sorrow, acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised. And we did not esteem him. When people do not esteem you, it should not worry you. I spoke about how uh, 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 Jephthah, uh, his brothers took him away. And they said, uh, they spoke about an inheritance. We have been given an inheritance. It may not be sin. You know, to have peace is an inheritance. They don't have it. You have an inheritance. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding. It, despite your circumstances, how, how bushe, the peace of God guards you. You have an inheritance. Okay, I was coming to this verse that I live. Surely for he has borne our griefs and carried away our sorrows. Yes, yet as we, as we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted, but he was wounded by our transgressions. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was wounded for our transgressions. Morana Jesu was not wounded only physically. He was wounded in his spirit. What do you think if you have healed people? You have raised their dead. You have fed them. And then all of a sudden you are alone. There is no one to... He was wounded in his spirit. It was not only his body that was wounded. No wonder he said, before he could die, forgive them. You only forgive because you are wounded in your heart. You realize that this thing is so important. I cannot go with it to the grave. Father, I need to confess. Forgive them for they, whatever that they have done, but not for this sin. Forgive them. For they do not know what they are doing. Forgive them. They didn't know that you are the, the chosen one of the Lord. They don't know that you are God's, uh, the apple of his eye. They don't know that you are accepted in them. Forgive them. He spoke about forgiveness because his heart, his soul was wounded. The wound of life. It will cause you to hurt. It will cause you to develop bitterness. It will cause you to hate others. But do not go there. You have Jesus. The Bible says he was a man of sorrow. He was acquainted with grief. Acquaint yourself with grief. Uh, be observational learner. See how other people are handling it and make a choice or a if this is how I'm going to handle it. Beauty 
for ashes. Beauty for ashes, they are like twins. Rauka? They are like day and light. When you see day, you know that night is coming, right? <clears throat> when you see beauty, what's it about? Mrs. Ashes or Mr. Ashes is lingering around. When, yes, so is life. When, when, when you see life, you know that death is lingering around. These things are twins. When you see riches, you know that poverty is lingering around. It is how you handle it and prepare for it. So this morning, I want to encourage you, Ebanaba Mudimu. Let us prepare on all fronts. God has given us the spirit of wisdom. God has given us the spirit of power. God has given us all that pertains to life and godliness. The only thing that you need to do, I have written here, the access code to deal with the wound of life. You must have the knowledge of God. You must have the knowledge of God. You must know your father. That is point number one. You must have faith in God. The Bible says we must have faith, point number one, that he exists and he is the rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So you must have faith in him, have faith in his ability, have faith in his willingness to intervene in your situation. You know, there are things that God will not um, forbid. I'll give you an example. You know that uh, there was a time Jesus was born and uh, Joseph received a dream that uh, he needed to do something to run away. Why didn't God just take Jesus? He didn't. It was not part of his plan. That's why we must always ask his plan. Jesus, uh, the Lord God said to Moses, go and run away because Herod wants to kill the child. Run away. He didn't heed him. He didn't send an angel with thunder and whatever. He says, run away. For three years he was there. And then later, the same God said, those that wanted to kill the child has now died. Which means Jesus was killable. Even if he was the son of God. They could have killed him. So Luena, learn to know, discern when to run, when to hide. When to do all those things because you are killable as well. You can be destroyed as well. So have faith in God. I'm wrapping up now. Prayer, prayer, prayer. Prayer is an instrument that God has given us that we can communicate with him. We can labor, we can complain, we can tell him our sorrows. We can tell him our fears, we can tell him our pain, we can tell him our sorrows. And the last one that will help you to heal, be committed to your relationship with God and allow him to heal, him, to heal you. All the people that we talk about, that we admire, the very Jesus that we love and we adore, the Bible says he learned through suffering the obedience to God. There is something about suffering that makes us to obey. We obey easier because we have suffered. Because there was punishment. How else could God help us to love one another? If I have not been betrayed, now I understand your pain. Because myself, I have been betrayed. I hope this word helps someone today to say that wound of life, God is able to heal. That wound of life, God is taking care of it. He himself was wounded for our transgression so that we should not be hurting anymore. We should understand who he is. We should love him. We should stand for him in the name of the Lord Jesus.